Well, good morning. It's Tuesday, 9th of November, and this is my market report. Now, big news overnight. Uh, I was running about 6 o'clock last night with the news that uh, Shell, which for many years now has owned 34%, or just over a third of Woodside Petroleum, had decided to sell 10% of its stake. Now, it was being done at a, a roughly a 5% discount to the closing market price of Woodside, and the stake was snapped up. And the reason is, is that Shell tried to buy Woodside back in 2003 to take the whole company over. It was prevented from doing so by then Treasurer Peter Costello, who said such a takeover would not be in the national interest. Now, Shell's willingness to now sell out its stake means that Woodside is probably firmly back in play, and many people think that the obvious suitor for Woodside would be BHP. BHP does have a petroleum division, um, really, which is centred on uh, Bass Strait. It's one of the major aspects of BHP that makes it different from Rio Tinto. And the problem with this petroleum division is, is that the, the gas that's coming out of Bass Strait is reducing. It's, it's, it's a declining asset. So BHP needs to either get big or get out. And speaking about getting big, it has tried several takeover bids itself over the past few years. Of course, two and a half years ago, it bid for Rio. It abandoned that bid at the height of the global financial crisis, or perhaps one should say the depth of the financial crisis. Probably a silly move. It, it would have got away with the takeover, and, and today it would be sitting very pretty. It then tried to do a joint venture in Western Australia with Rio. That's been knocked back by various regulators. It's now bid for Potash Corp of Saskatchewan, but lo and behold, the Canadian version of the Foreign Investment Review Board has said it's not in the national interest. So BHP, under its head at Marius Cloppers, needs to do a deal. Many people think that now that Woodside is potentially up for sale, that Shell is prepared to sell its stake to the, uh, to the right bidder for the right price, means that, uh, well, BHP might have a crack at Woodside sometime soon. We'll see. Woodside shares is actually lower this morning because, of course, many people who took up the placement yesterday are now selling the shares for a small profit today. Uh, Quanta shares have been pretty weak recently, understandably, given the drama surrounding the A380 and after that one of the 747s. Uh, it seems that the fault lies more with the Rolls-Royce engine, and in fact Rolls-Royce shares in London were down 10% over the past couple of days. Interestingly, the Rolls-Royce Aero Engine Corporation is quite separate from the uh, car division, which is of course now owned by BMW. Uh, so we'll see what happens. I mean, I think if Qantas gets this sorted out, its shares will probably go back up, because it, it's not going to affect the airline's profitability in the long run, unless the A380s actually can't fly anymore, which would be very bad for, for, for long-haul passengers, at least for six months or so. Uh, speaking of the big banks, now there is growing political pressure to do something about their, or at least the Commonwealth Bank's, evil interest rate rise at 45 basis points. Look, I think both sides of politics need to temper their, what they're saying. I mean, the big banks have actually done pretty well throughout the global financial crisis. Yes, uh, deposits were guaranteed by the government and their borrowing was guaranteed, but they paid the government for those guarantees. And in fact, the government never had to actually use them. So it's been a net benefit to the Australian government. Uh, I think regulation of banks is a very socialistic idea that you know, if Australia goes down that route, there's a chance that the bank's credit ratings will be cut and they'll find international borrowing more expensive anyway. That won't lower the cost of credit for consumers, it will actually increase it. Having said that, the share prices of banks have been a bit weaker over the past few days because people are worried about what the government might do. Channel 10 shares were stronger this morning. Uh, news is that both James Packer and Lachlan Murdoch have been given board seats on 10, and indeed 10's executive chairman, Nick Falloon, is going to resign after the December annual general meeting. He, of course, had a notorious falling out with the Packer family some years ago. It appears he's done a good job at Channel 10, but he and Packer can't sit in a room together. So we'll see what Channel 10 looks like. All sorts of rumours that Packer wants to scale back Channel 10's uh, plans to increase news and current affairs, that he wants to use a, a joint venture between 10 and Foxtel to bid for the AFL rights next year. Uh, there's all sorts of debates going on about the siphoning laws of, of free-to-air TV when it comes to major sporting events. So lots of theories as to what James Pack is up to. My personal one is that he actually wants uh, a media investment again because he needs the political clout that comes with it. Remember, James T uh, Packer's other big interests are in casinos, and uh, my feeling is he wants to use Crown to bid for Tabcourt's casinos, which are in both... Uh, uh, Sydney and Brisbane, and that way James Packer could become the dominant casino owner in Australia. And finally, um, the A-dollar hit, uh, well, record high since it was floated in 1983. Now, it's come back a bit. It got to almost a dollar and two uh, cents US uh, a, a few days ago. It's now about a dollar and one, 
the fact is this is still a, a massive high and as we pointed out in father and son just before it is possibly going to affect the government's mining tax revenues and therefore it could start impacting mining tax profits and we've seen mining shares be, grow very strongly recently and i'll just say that if the a dollar stays strong and remember the miners who mine in australia have their costs in a dollars but their revenues in US dollars, we could see um, some profit downgrades coming soon, notwithstanding the increase in commodity prices. And finally, speaking of commodities, gold also hit a record high overnight. It's punched through, through 1,400 US dollars an ounce. That is on a record high this decade, this century. It's a record high ever since humans started digging the yellow metal out of the ground.